Hello and welcome to this NSPCC and O2 webinar on practical ways to help you keep your kids safe online. Hopefully you can hear me okay, otherwise you might need to adjust the volume on your computer or your phone. My name is Helen Westerman and I'm Head of Local Campaigns here at the NSPCC. And for the past, past five years I've been working with O2 to deliver parent workshops out there in community settings, schools, businesses and other workplaces, helping parents keep their children safe in their online space. This workshop lasts for about 30 minutes and will include an online screen presentation and videos, so it might be useful to have your screen in the full screen mode. Finally, I'd like to say I hope you find the webinar interesting and informative. I'll start by explaining what will be covered during the webinar. We'll use the first part to explore the concerns that parents might have about their children's use of tech and begin to look at some of the resources that we have available to support you. From here, we'll move on to look at what children enjoy doing on the internet and how it can help them as well as some of the risks. We'll then discuss how to use our team frameworks, which stands for talk, explore, agree and manage, which helps children stay safe by having regular and open conversations about what they're doing online. Practical tips and advice are provided throughout the session and we'll look in more detail at the help available from the NSPCC and O2 partnership. We're not going to be able to cover everything during this session, but we hope to leave you feeling more confident and better equipped to talk to your kids about keeping safe online following this webinar. It's important to remember you're not alone in worries you may have about what your kids are doing online. And according to some research that the NSPCC carried out last year, we know that for some parents, their biggest worry is their children won't talk to them if they see or hear something that upsets them online. But despite this, less than a quarter of parents have reported frequently discussing online safety with their children. To explore this a bit more, we're now gonna show you a short film that highlights some of the concerns that parents may have and just bear with me while I open the, the film for you. I think I worry um, that their location is easily identifiable. I don't want people to be able to see where they are. It can be quite difficult to um, keep up to date with all the um, different changes and keeping um, certain apps safe. Um, I think if you're not techie yourself, it can be a little bit complicated. Um, and you can, yes, you can go online and stuff, but I think it can be a little bit of a minefield. So I know that I do um, maybe struggle a little bit trying to keep up to date with it. A major concern of mine is that he'll derive self-worth through social media and therefore if a post doesn't get the response that it wants or even worse it gets criticised or he somehow feels humiliated by his friends or, or strangers uh, I feel that could have a real negative impact on his uh, development. My ultimate fear is that they will be groomed by somebody that they don't know online who pretends to be somebody that they're not. The greatest worry is, is that she becomes easily led by that person um, and they may, you know, they talk her into doing things that she shouldn't do. I'm really conscious about being in the room when they're playing. So the computer isn't in their bedroom, it's in our living room. So when they're playing, I can kind of hear what they're, what they're doing. I talk to both the kids all the time about those risks. I think that's probably my best bet to help them stay safe. Um, and also for me to just feel comfortable that they're okay and they're not worried and they're not frightened. It's difficult and I think sometimes you have to pitch those conversations differently for the different ages. But yeah, we do talk about it and they talk between themselves as well. So I think openness is probably your best bet. So as I mentioned, we've been working with um, O2 now since 2015 um, on various aspects of child keeping children safe online. And I'm gonna cover a number of our joint resources throughout this webinar, from our free booklets and games to the NetAware website and our advice line for parents. All of the resources and services offered through the partnership are available to everyone. So you don't need to be an O2 customer to use any of these resources. 
This includes visiting O2 stores for free technical advice on how to make your devices safer for children. Please be aware, however, that O2 stores are temporarily closed at the moment due to the coronavirus pandemic. Now we're gonna look at what children like to do online. Technology helps children learn, explore their creative side and connect with friends and family. And we know that the internet presents many opportunities for children to develop. For children online and offline are all the same world. So it makes sense that what they like to do online is much the same as they like to do offline. They like to play, learn, create and connect. If I think back to my own childhood without the internet, I was doing all of these things, but just not in the online space. Play is something that all kids like to do. It helps with development, social skills, and children like to play games online, whether it's on their own or with others, and they might play on your device when they're really little before getting their own devices as they go older. There's also loads of educational games out there and programs like Minecraft are even being used in school. Um, children also like being creative, so sites like Pop Jam encourage them to create pictures that they can share and other apps allow them to share images or videos as a way of expressing themselves. And for younger children, there's even apps and games that let them pretend to be hairdressers. Let's not forget the opportunity that kids have to learn online. They like to browse the internet for information, especially if they need help with homework. In fact, lots of homework is now done online, including even in primary schools. And my daughter, when I ask her to look in a dictionary for something, she will always say, well, why, mum, wouldn't I Google it? I think of particular importance, the internet offers fantastic opportunities for children to go online and connect with friends and family, make new friends. Kids love to be sociable. Um, so with all these things to do online, it's not surprising, therefore, that a lot of parents tell us that they worry that their children spend too much time online. Now, whilst distinctively there may be concerns around how long children spend online, the benefits and risks are more relevant to what children are doing when they're online rather than how long they spend doing it. So, for example, if a child spends several hours online researching for a school project, this may be really beneficial for their learning, whereas it can only take a few minutes to start a conversation with someone they don't know on a game that has communication functions. So the best way to find out what they're doing online is to simply ask them. And that's easier, we acknowledge, with, with younger children. We'll talk more about regular conversations next as we explore our team framework. Regular conversations form the first part of our team framework. Four steps to keep your child safe online. Talk, explore, agree and manage. We're going to come back to this framework throughout the session. Here's how it's broken down. Firstly, talk to your child or children regularly about what they're doing online, the same as you would ask about their day at school. Online life is very much real life for many children, so taking an interest in what they're doing, why they enjoy it, and how they can stay safe. Sometimes we only, as adults, we address online activities when we're worried or annoyed about them, when it's obviously really important to discuss, have those discussions when they're balanced. So actually we hear from children all the time that perhaps they don't take um, issues or concerns to their parent because the only time the parent shows an interest is when they're cross with them or wanting to get the child off YouTube or clash of clans or something like that. So it's really important to have conversations with children that reflect the broad range of things they do online, not just, just the risks. This helps to keep lines of communication open, meaning that children know they can discuss things with us and come, come to us if they see things that worry or upset them. Ask your child to, to show you their favourite things to do online and take an interest in what they do, just as you would do offline. This will give you a way to support and encourage them with learning what they know and explore their online world together. When we move on to agree, it's really important that we're agreeing rules and boundaries for our family together. And to be a great role model ourselves, remember that rules about oversharing online go both ways. And we often hear from children who tell us that they're told not to share where they live or which school they go to, yet their parents have posted pictures of them on social media at the beginning of every school term in their new school uniform, identifying where they live and which school they go to. So being that good role model and leading by example is really important. And finally, manage. So managing the technology that your children use through parental controls and privacy settings. And we'll talk about this a bit more later in the session. 
So let's moving moving on. Let's now look at um, some of the challenges that parents may face. Um, regular conversations are important and lots of parents do want to talk and explore what children are doing online. However, when children are using so many different platforms, it can be really difficult to remember and to keep on top of them. So NetAware has been developed to be really user friendly. Um, it's a, a product developed between the NSPCC and O2 and it's an online safety website that has simple bite-sized information and advice on different social networks, apps and games that kids are using, helping you explore the platforms together. It's designed to be really straightforward. It's got a straightforward guide to understanding what your kids are doing online. It has reviews and tips from O2 gurus, parents and kids themselves. So you really get a range of different perspectives on the platforms that they're using. There's a section on latest news that discusses the newest games or trends and a summary of frequently asked questions. NetAware can also direct you to other resources for further support. And I personally found this really useful with my daughter when she was younger, coming home from school and asking, can I get this particular app or game? And we'd go on, look at NetAware and, and read the reviews from other parents and other children. And I'm almost the same shame to say that she was often more persuaded by the views of other young people than, than me. But actually it worked because where she saw that young people were nervous or expressing concerns about some of their sexual content, for example, on a game, we were then able to have a conversation about actually maybe now is not the right time for you to have that game or app. Um, there's also a, a really good online safety newsletter to help you stay up to date on latest trends and you can sign up for that on the NetAware website. So how do we manage all of these, all of the risks? Um, the risks are wide ranging, but generally we think they fall into three categories. What children are seeing, who they're meeting and interacting with, and what they do and say online. So a bit more about their, their conduct and their digital footprint. So if we look at the first one, what are they seeing? Well, we know that the internet wasn't designed for children in mind and a lot of content isn't really suitable for adults, let alone children. So it goes without saying they might have come across inappropriate content. And by that, we mean things like um, racial hatred, violence, dangerous advice, um, encouraging things like eating disorders or self-harm, gambling or, or pornographic sites. And whatever the scenario, you'll want to decide how best to protect your child from accessing this type of content, reassuring them that if they come to you if they're upset or worried by something that they see online. And the best way to manage these risks is to use the technical tools like parental controls to filter content, which we'll talk about later. But it's also important for you to check out the sites and apps that they're using regularly and to follow the age ratings. You can find these on, on NetAware. The next one, who they're meeting. Children and young people may chat or become friends with people on social networks or online games, even if they don't know them or have never met them in person. And I know from my own daughter that there's something about wanting to have loads of friends, to be seen to be having loads of friends on particular platforms. And that's really challenging because we want to know that our, our children are talking and connecting with people that they know in the real world as well as online. Having these kind of informal friendships or being in touch with people that they don't know can make them vulnerable to bullying, inappropriate friendships and grooming, or to someone who may pretend to be a child or young person but isn't. And sometimes the people they know in real life might be the ones bullying them or asking them to do things that they don't want to do. We think that the best way to manage these risks is to talk to your children about what constitutes a healthy friendship, discuss who they're friends with online, how they choose their friends and what information they share with these friends. Remind them that if anyone makes them feel sad or worried or upset, that they can come and tell you. Reassure them that whatever they're worried about, things can and will be done to help. They remind them not to respond to messages and to use the block blocking and reporting tools. Children can also get support from Childline, which we'll cover later in this session. The final one, do. So around conduct, parents are often worried about the amount of time children spend online and how much is too much. And children can put themselves at risk through their own behaviour, not just through too much time online, but they can also overshare personal information or photos, um, e.g. sexting. They can bully others, sometimes unintentionally, and they can even run up large debts by not realising they were spending real money 
or that they may make inappropriate comments or statements themselves, which may affect their own reputation or relationships. The best way to manage these risks is to agree rules and boundaries with your children, whether it's the time they spend online, what they share or how much money they spend. Help with understanding the possible consequences of their behaviour is also really important. Use the technical tools like passwords to manage and protect and set a good example with your own online behaviour. Role modelling, as mentioned before, is really important. Think about boundaries you can set for yourself as well, such as images you share of children and posting comments online. Agree these together because children often are really unhappy when we, as, as parents, posted um, pictures of them that actually they haven't given their permission for. The nature of the internet means that the risks children face are constantly changing. So keep talking to your children and stay up to date with what they see, who they meet and interact with, and what they do and say online. So all of this can feel really daunting for us as parents because we know that children are doing all of these things and more, and it's sometimes really difficult to know how to respond. And right now you might be feeling that you're one of these things. You might be at either end of the spectrum or you might be in the middle. We know that actually being at either end of the spectrum can cause some problems, particularly as, as children go up and grow up and they're trying to kind of um, learn their own way to navigate their online worlds. So we want you to come away from this session feeling confident, confident to have conversations with your children and confident to know where to go for advice and support and confident to agree rules and boundaries with your children about what you all do online together. So think about where you are now with your children and maybe moderate that as they uh, grow older and mature and become more responsible online. Keeping up to date with changing technology can be challenging and um, helping your child stay safe online can sometimes seem really hard, but it's important to take on the challenge and treat it like any other parenting task. It's really okay to be worried about your child's online safety and help is at hand, which is why we're here. There's a whole range of technical tools to help keep children safe online. So we've talked about talk, agree, explore, and now we're looking at manage. So as I mentioned, there's all these technical tools from parental controls on Wi-Fi, devices and search engines, to privacy settings on websites, social media and apps. These can filter content, restrict access, and block specific websites that you may be worried about. Within certain sites, your child can block and report accounts or posts that make them feel uncomfortable or worried. Those regular conversations will help them to recognize when this happens. Where platforms such as Snapchat or Facebook offer location settings, turning these off will go a long way to keeping children safer while on the sites, apps and games that they currently enjoy using. We know that with so many different platforms and changes, it can be really challenging to find practical ways to ensure that children are using platforms safely. That's why we have further support to help you with this. So um, we're working in partnership with O2 and we have O2 gurus trained by NSPCC in store or over the phone. Sometimes we find it easier to have a chat face to face. So if you want help setting up your child's first phone, updating settings or understanding how certain controls work, you can make an appointment with a guru in most O2 stores or just pop in. And as I mentioned before, O2 stores are temporarily closed, but we will be open after the coronavirus pandemic subsides. You can also speak to an O2 guru through our free advice line. And currently that's open um, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Monday to Friday. And the, the hours will be extended once the coronavirus pandemic has subsided. Both services are open for everyone to contact, not just O2 customers, and they offer a really great non-judgmental and supportive approach to helping parents with all sorts of technical questions. Um, with my own daughter, we went into an O2 store when she wanted to have her first phone and the O2 guru sat with her, talked about parental controls on privacy settings and made it almost sound cool so that she was really happy to have those things installed. And every year we've gone back and she's had the conversation with the guru in store about how she can tweak the settings, the parental controls, etc. as she gets older. They make it seem kind of um, natural and part of having a phone. And that's really helpful for me as a parent who sometimes gets accused of um, wanting to, to watch what she's doing a bit too closely. So they have that really good way of engaging with children and families, and it's a really helpful service. Um, remember, technical settings are not 
a fail-safe way to limit content. These go hand in hand with speaking to your child regularly about what they do online. Ex essentially, technical settings are one part of the overall approach involving regular conversations. So far, we've covered a range of tools and services to help you keep your child safe, but it's important to remember that if your child needs to reach out for additional support, Childline is always here. There's a wealth of support available on the phone, online, anytime for children with any kind of worry or concern. We know that in many cases, our children will come and speak to us and they feel upset, but sometimes they do just need that bit of extra support to find the right words and confidence to, to speak out. Childline is a service just for children and young people to explore their worries in a safe space. The service is confidential, except when there's deemed to be a serious risk to the immediate safety or welfare of a child. And um, we know that for many children, they feel comfortable coming to Childline to talk to about issues that they might face online when they don't feel able to talk to a parent or carer. Sometimes they tell us that their parent, they're worried about a parent or carer overreacting or taking a device away or perhaps a parent going into school to try and sort something out. So we'll often run through what they're going to say to a parent or carer with a child line counsellor almost as a practice run. As well as on the phone or web chat uh, 24 hours a day, the child line website has a series of advice pages for children around online safety. There are also message boards which are moderated by the child line team for young people to discuss anything on their minds with other young people. We've spoken a lot about having conversations, which can feel daunting sometimes to start. And to help O2's developed um, Parents versus Kids, a free online safety game to open up discussions between parents and their children about online life. You can play a full game of Parents versus Kids either online via phone using Amazon Alexa, or you can go on the O2 website. It's a great way to launch those discussions about online safety with your children. Um, I'm now going to show you a, a short film by Jerry Horner, who's an ex Spice Girl, and she's using Alexa to launch a conversation about online safety with her daughter Bluebell. Please bear with me while I show the, the video. Alexa, play Parents versus Kids. How old should you be to use Snapchat? I think it's 13. Is it not 13? Is it 13? Correct. In 2017, what was the most popular Google search? Meghan Markle. Meghan Markle what though? Just Meghan Markle. Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter. Ah! The internet. What is a VPN? PAW. Parents are wicked. It's from the 90s. Please. I think it's the left. Your left. Or your right. I don't, I, I don't. You don't know, do you? That's in the olden days. It's the internet yet to dial in. Wow. What is the gram? Oh, you say Insta, but some people say the gram. Am I not cool? I can't think of anyone else I'd rather be to. I can't uh. think of anyone else I'd rather be. <laughs> So we're drawing to the end of today's webinar um, and we just to conclude, we started by thinking about the worries and concerns that we have as parents and carers about our children going online. We then looked at the opportunities the digital world provides for our children through play, creating, learning and connecting. We introduced our team framework, which is talk, talk explore, agree and manage and the different resources to help you better understand the apps that children use to get online, what they can do online and the risks they might face. So what are the key steps you can take to keep your children safe? The first one we think is talk to your children about what they're doing online, why they enjoy it and if there's anything that is worrying them. The second one is to visit NetAware to learn about the apps, sites and games that your children are using. Sign up to get updates and keep checking back for our latest news. Number three is set up parental controls and privacy settings. Book an appointment with an O2 guru or give them a call via the advice line number. And finally, number four, use our team framework to manage this process on an ongoing basis. 
We'd encourage all of you to have two conversations this week, one with your child or children and one with another adult. Firstly, talk to your child about what they're doing online. Perhaps mention that you've looked at this webinar. Don't underestimate the power that simple conversations with your children can have. There are also other adults who are part of the family, like grandparents, aunts, uncles and aunties. Include them in your conversations about staying safe online. Sometimes kids prefer to talk to a trusted adult who isn't their parent, so it's important they share your knowledge and approach and understand how they can help and support you and your children. And we hear regularly from children who will say, well, at home, everything's locked down, but when I go to nanny and granddad's, actually I can access everything. So it's really important that the whole family is involved in, in keeping children safe. Finally, I hope you've enjoyed the workshop and found it useful. Um, using the resources we've discussed today, millions of parents have now had conversations with their children about staying safe online. Um, we will send you a follow-up email following today's webinar, sharing all the information that's been covered today, as well as links to NetAware, Parents versus Kids, and other resources and support available. We will also be sharing a survey asking for feedback on the webinar. It's important for us to receive your feedback so we know how we're doing and what else we need to include. And finally, thank you so much for, for listening and viewing the webinar today.